After setting up dozens of IoT smart home devices over the years, I began wondering how hard could it be to build one of these from scratch. I ended up building this swimming notification device that resides in our neighbor's homes. And whenever my kids go swimming, a notification gets sent to the device, allowing children and parents to know that, hey, the Wagners are, are in the pool and you're invited to come over. In this video, I'm gonna give you a demo of how the device works and then go over all of the features that I've incorporated into it. So let's take a look. The idea for Splash Flag came out with, you know, hey, let's let all of our friends know when we're swimming so they can come over and swim too, entertain my kids. And the original idea was to get some kind of actual, um, you know, physical flag to put in the driveway um, so people would know to come over. There were a couple problems with that. You know, the biggest being, of course, that we would put the flag out and maybe by the time people would see that and go get dressed to get the, you know, get their bathing suits on and come swimming, we'd be wrapping up in the pool. And so it just wouldn't work out timing wise. So if we start out by looking at the components, obviously the LCD screen is front and center. Um, that's a big deal. Um, if we actually turn around to the back, we got the USB cable plugged in. That just goes to a wall adapter. We have a servo motor here um, that actually raises the flag. So now instead of a physical you know, flag hanging out in our front yard, we've got a digital flag uh, that can be raised. Um, inside, this all runs on an ESP32 uh, S3 Nano, and that controls all of the messaging and everything else. Uh, there's also some, an um, MQTT server running on the back end that actually is sending out the notifications. One other feature I forgot on this, uh, in case you may see this kind of inset button here, this is actually it does double duty. It not only clears the message, uh, so in case, you know, a parent doesn't want a child to see that the neighbors are swimming, they can quickly press it to uh, clear that message out. Uh, but additionally, it can be used to factory reset the device. And so that's actually what I'm going to do first here. So if I show you this device and we, I push that button on the back and we hold it for 10 seconds, eventually we get this uh, message really briefly saying, hey, we're resetting to factory settings. And so what happens then is the device will reset itself. And when it starts up again, it'll go through a little boot sequence, tell us the firmware number. Um, and since we just did a factory reset, it doesn't know how to connect to the Wi-Fi. So we get a little message saying, you know, connect to the Wi-Fi. So if I switch over to my phone and go to the Wi-Fi settings, we will see the splash flag device is available and unprotected. So if we actually go ahead and connect to it, this will connect and then the captive portal code, um, which is running on the device, right? It's intercepting the iPhone's DNS. Um, well, it's intercepting the DNS and so it's redirecting the iPhone to this login page. And so I can type in the name of my home Wi-Fi access point. And then I can put in the password as well. And once I do that, uh, the device will update with the credentials and restart. It saves those credentials uh, internally to kind of the long-term storage. Um, so even after it restarts, right, it maintains those credentials. You can see now the second time around after it reboots, Splash Flag has connected and is awaiting pool announcements. Um, basically announced anytime there's a power outage or maybe the internet goes out or whatever, um, the device will automatically try to reconnect to that um, to that Wi-Fi, right, that the credentials were saved for. So if we test the device now, we can see the web app loads here. It's kind of set to defaults, um, right, kind of a one hour swim time and a default message. We can, you know, change this to whatever we want, eat some pizza, right, maybe we're having pizza, people are welcome to stay, need some of our pizza. We'll publish the message and, right, then our flag and message goes up. Like I said, there's that little button on the back. So if someone doesn't want this uh, to be displayed in their house, they can just push that button and the flag goes down awaiting the next message. Uh, there's also this debug mode, uh, which sends a message to a different MQTT topic. You can see here, kind of the, the topic is listed on the screen as splash flag slash debug. And if we send it, only devices that uh, are registered as development devices receive this message. So uh, only my testing you know, and development devices, not every neighbor who has one of these. That allows me to continue to make firmware updates. Uh, Splash Flag also comes with over the air updates. So um, at startup, you probably saw that there was that uh, firmware version uh, every day, once a day, the hardware checks for, is there a new release on GitHub of the software? And if there is, it downloads, it installs it, and uh, everyone's devices stay up to date. This case, you'll notice, is 3D printed. Um, 
I did that all from scratch. It was my first really kind of complicated project. You can even see some lowered text in here that uh, I just, I don't have a multicolor printer, but I just printed uh, in multiple passes and then super glued it all together. Uh, but I'm really happy with how this came out. And um, I did forget to leave room for the bolts, which is why there's a weird arrangement of them in the back instead of just in all four corners. I kind of had to fit them around the existing devices inside. Um, you know, so it's definitely a, a V1 device for sure. Uh, but for a first project, i um, very satisfied with how it came out. If you check the description of this video on YouTube, it'll, there'll be a link to my blog post, which goes into all the detail and code um, of this device. So in case you're interested in learning more of how some of the features work, or if you're interested in building one of these for yourself, be sure to go to that link in the description to read more about it. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.